Well, let's go to the ring and see who we wish was in the match instead of the people we got. Because the the opening match on the pay-per-view of itself that was presented to me was the six-man with Jericho, Sammy Guevara, and Minoru Suzuki, the Japanese Fabergé egg, against Eddie Kingston, Wheeler Useless, and Shota Umino. And again, this is the first match on the, the big show, the main show. Jericho's the most popular heel in wrestling history. He comes out, they play the music, the people sing for the music. Sammy Guevara was a babyface that suddenly became so unpopular, he was looking for people with switchblades and torches because he was just such a smarmy-faced little prick, him and, and his girlfriend bitch face. They were such heat-getting machines that they switched him heel and now they've teamed him back up with jericho who's the heel that they cheer more than any other so they will cheer now that sammy's a heel they'll cheer him when he was a baby face they were booing the shit out of him i mean this is an AEW match they start out for a minute yuda gave jericho eight or ten german suplexes in a row and then all six guys jumped in and spilled out to the floor, and the whole match fell apart in the first minute and a half. Then suddenly they settled down again and start having a match again. Does Wheeler Yuta remind you of Taka Michinoku? No. Why not? Are you just saying because of the body type, or what would remind you of Taka Michinoku? I'm saying an, an excellent, physically adept wrestler who can do all the moves and who has no physique, no facial expressions, no particular charisma or main event look, but the hardcore fans are going to go nuts for him to begin with. And it is the same thing that happened with Taka 25 years ago. It was just, you know... <clears throat> so he's been shoehorned into this thing because somebody there up there likes him. John Moxley. Well, probably. <laughs> yeah, Nick Gage, now John Mox, or now uh, Wheeler, or whatever. Anyway, in this match, the heels and the baby faces work the same. They just trade off doing shit to each other. And there's no cheating on one side or science shown on the other side. Kingston and Su Suzuki stand there and let each other hit them over and over on purpose. It's the same thing. I like Eddie Kingston. I liked him when he was almost a position where he could have drawn him some money when he was the sympathetic baby face to the people after the Players Club or Players Tribune or whatever article with all of his tribulations getting the wrestling business. And if they'd have kept him from his worst instincts, being a mark for this Japanese strong style bullshit and let him work like an underneath baby face with a shitty physique sell and then make a big comeback and bleed some he could have been a top baby face for him instead he's doing this shit with these fucking broke down past their prime japanese guys that ain't taking this very seriously to begin with or where they're going to get hurt or anything and it's the shits and minoru suzuki is like if a mannequin could do wrestling moves I'm not saying he's not a mixed martial arts legend or a badass shooter. I'm saying he looks visually ridiculous to anybody who doesn't know that, and he can't bend any of his fucking body parts. And when Kingston throws chops or forearms that Suzuki can't sell or snap his head for, they just look fake. And then they well, did a spot in this match. Go ahead. Let me just ahead. say, because I'm an Eddie Kingston fan, and I actually think the biggest weakness in Eddie Kingston's game, unfortunately, is his in-ring and situations like this. The chops Eddie Kingston was delivering. You know, I wasn't a big fan of the chop in general, but Kenta Kabachi knew how to make it look like he was really killing the guy. Eddie Kingston's chops did not look like that, and he's copying someone else doing Especially it. when they get in the corner and do the thing where they're doing the That's what I'm talking about. rapid fire chops with the right hand while they're slapping their leg with the left. What the fuck? That's stupid. That's exactly what I was talking about. Some Japanese guy does that, right? That was what Kenta Kabashi did. 
Okay, very good. Some Japanese guy. At the what end. is it? Fucking stupid. It looks phony. But it looks phony to throw forearms and, and chops if you're just standing there daring the guy to do it anyway. It's just bullshit. And then they did a spot in this match where all three of the heels got all three of the baby faces in submission holes at the same time. For I would think the first time in the history of wrestling ever over the last 140 years or whatever, the heels got the baby faces in submission holds. They just took the old spot and did it backwards. Uh, they gave an iceberg tag to Omino, who did an okay comeback. I'm waiting for some of these new guys to really tickle my taint. Everybody did goofy dives. It's the first match. I'm right. Leave anything for somebody else. Everybody did a big move to each other. And the people in the arena, that's the thing about the AEW fans. They don't come to see anything make sense or for the shit not to look fake or for the anybody to win. They don't want their hero to win and the villain to lose. They just want to see people take goofy bumps and nearly break their necks and cheer for those. And they do it over and over. And more tags in and out. Guys disappear in the, for long stretches at a time while two guys will do something in the ring and then they'll have a prolonged six way. And then finally, uh, Ty Conti hits Umino in the back with a baseball bat and Umino staggered around in a contrived fashion and then immediately hit three moves on Jericho and got a two count. So fuck, say what you want about this guy, but He's pretty badass if he can fucking hit three things on Jericho instantly after being hit with a baseball bat. Well, baseball's not big in Brazil. She may not know what she's doing. Well, that's true. She didn't swing it properly. And then they did a prolonged five-way because Yuta is gone somewhere. I'm not sure where. And then Jericho hit the Judas on Umino or Domino. Oh, Umino. Rocky, the Ramon, where... Oh, oh, my woman, no, oh, there you go. It's a bad idea, Rocky. Don't do it. It's not going to get played. I never have bad ideas. Well, no one Tw wants a song about Umino after one match on the show. That's a bad idea. <laughs> 27 minutes into the show, and that was the match that was over with at that point. You know, Umino's a young star over there, and he's someone they want to do something with, it appears, and he looked pretty good in this match. And before the match, they showed video, or I think it was before the match, of Jericho years ago in Japan giving him the Boston Crab on the floor, and I think at the Tokyo Dome. Yes. So I'm thinking, all right, it's been years. I've been following the back and forth, if there's been any. He's going to get his comeback over Jericho here. No, Jericho beats him. Jericho beats him, and the well, guy goes back to the Well, I can't argue with that, because in, if you're doing a co-promotion with another promotion, especially a promotion that's located 10,000 miles away, you need to win, your company needs to win 75% or so. If you have four, you take three, they get one. Or let's see what the fuck, but that wouldn't have been a place for Shota Unknown to beat Chris Jericho. And you know, the other problem too is we called it, whenever we previewed the pay-per-view, we called it that there'll be some spot with Suzuki and Eddie Kingston just chopping each other. And I can understand the AEW argument, if this were it, that, well, you do that because that's what people expect to see. You got to give them what they came to see. But on the other hand, I called it because it's obvious that's exactly what they're going to fucking do. And then they do it. And it's the same spot that almost every show they do has multiple matches with that spot, where all of a sudden the two guys just stand there and trade the forearms or the chops or the slaps, whatever it is, it means nothing. And there's you said this kind of early on, and it's not just about this match. There's too much shit you could just call right away. And I don't understand the fans that still get excited about it. When you have a six-man match, and again, I'm not talking about this one, and one guy goes to the floor, and then one guy dives on him, and then one after another, each person ends up in the ring right after the previous person dived. I can understand really loving that the first time. Maybe the second time someone did the space-flying tiger drop. But after a while, when you've seen it in so many matches, it's stupid. 
And I think there's too much stupid for me. So there's a lot of stuff like Suzuki, who I've liked in the past. But his modern stuff, there's a lot of stuff that people love because they love him. But I think if you objectively looked at it, you'd realize it may not be that great right now. Because basically, I'm market research here. I'm seeing these guys for one of the very first times, if not the very first time, and I'm okay, impress me. And and I think a lot of the these guys, I don't expect them, the underneath guys, whatever. Old Take a Shit's been the best, best looking one, and he's wrestled women and sex dolls, so I can't like him. Um, and children. But the top guys from New Japan, you can tell, are coming and they're working the match and they'll do a couple of their trademark things and they're getting by, but they're not risking getting hurt because nobody's, as I mentioned on a show we did here recently, nobody's going out of their way to look like the first time you ever saw Sayama or the first time you ever saw Fujinami or the first time you ever saw Jumbo or the, whatever the case. And fuck it in America. The first time you saw Akira Nogami, it was like, wow, well, who's this guy? <laughs> and now just everyone has a fucking bouffant. A bouffant. That is a word that is not used often enough in modern society. Bouffant. 